During the middle and late Permian, when only the most dangerous animals could survive, a group of four-legged, saber-toothed animals called therapsids rose to become some of the most dangerous animals the world has ever seen. They were so powerful and scary that people started calling them Gorgonopsids. In a nod to the Gorgons of Greek mythology, the Inostran Sevilla's bones were found near a quiet river in Russia at the end of the 19th century. The Inostran Sevilla was the biggest and, some say, the most dangerous of all the Gorgons. Even though it was found in the late 1800s, it wasn't properly described and given a name until 1922. The name was chosen to honor the Soviet geologist Alex and Inostrantsev. So, based on the skull and skeleton, Inostrantsevian Alex and Re was born. The Inostrantsevian was clearly a large member of its family. With an estimated length of 3 meters or 9.8 feet, the Alexander species would have been the largest Gorgonopsid at that time. But in the 1930s, another Gorgonopsid was found. This one was from South Africa. It was the Rubigia, and it was the largest African species ever found. It was also big enough to compete with the Enostrensivia for the title of King of the Gorgons. It had a huge head, which made many people think it was bigger than, or at least as big as, Enostrensivia. But Enostrensivia was not alone in its quest for the throne. Another species, Enostrensivia lati frons, was found later, and if the first species was a giant, then lati frons was a titan. Its skull was and still is the largest known Gorgonopsid skull, measuring 60 centimeters or 23.6 inches, which is about twice as long as a gray wolf's skull. Because of how big its head was, scientists think it could have been over 11 feet 3.35 meters long, making it the biggest Gorgonopsid ever found. The paleontologist who found it knew it was a new species because its snout was lower, wider, and had fewer teeth than the holotype. Later, even more species would be found, like Urolensis, which was the smallest of the three. Even though it was probably the biggest animal of its kind that ever lived, the Anastrensivia was the most dangerous gorgon because it had other features that made it so. One of these features was ironic agility. The Anastrensivia is thought to have been faster than other gorgonopsids, including the smallest genus, which was 3.3 times smaller than itself. And all of this is even more amazing when you consider that it wasn't exactly a light build. Its body and center were thin, but its frame was full of muscles. It could end up weighing anywhere from 660 pounds 300 kilograms to 1,000 pounds 454 kilograms, which is about the same range as the North American elk. So, Enostran Sevilla was fast because its bones were long. Its humerus and femur were longer than average, which means it had proportionally longer limbs than other animals of its kind, which suggests it was more agile and faster. The Enostran Sevilla's bones would have made it good at running, so it would have been easy for it to run after prey and catch it with its strong front legs and claws. Compared to its back legs, its front legs were very strong and stocky. This suggests that it used them a lot, along with its back legs. The Enotran Sevilla had another weapon for killing, and this one was much more dangerous and powerful. It was a Gorgonopsid because of its saber-like teeth, which were called canines. But Anastran Sevilla took it to a whole new level because its teeth were so big. The canines on its upper jaw were 15 centimeters, or 5.9 inches, long and very strong. It is not known for sure how hard it could bite with its deadly teeth, but it is thought to have been less than that of other large Gorgonopsids, which had thicker and wider skulls than Anastran Sevilla, still strong, but narrower and lighter. Also, its biased thorts were probably weaker than a black bear's and couldn't have broken a bone. Even though the Anastran Sevilla couldn't break bones with its teeth, it was still a very active hunter and could have used its canines in many ways, as shown by the large number of ways to kill it. Some people think that he hunted by going after his prey, diving right in, wrestling with it, and using his teeth to cut and pierce soft, vulnerable targets like the neck or belly, killing them quickly. 
Others think it didn't have strong arms for hunting. Instead, they think it used ambushes, where it would sneak up on its prey and attack it with a big bite. It would then move back a bit, and do this again and again until the animal died from blood loss or shock. This ambush, attack, and then run away plan is the one most people agree on, since the Inostran Sevilla jaw seems better made because it has two joints. This meant that the Inostran Sevilla could open its mouth very wide and give giant bites that could drip out large chunks of flesh. Though in recent years, people have started to think that this mix of ideas actually uses both force and surprise. The Inostran Sevilla would run after and eat smaller animals, while it would attack larger ones by surprise. This new idea also fits with the other animals that lived with it, such as the small Vivaxosaurus and the large, armored Scutosaurus. Once the Inostran Sevilla was sure it could kill, it would have probably cut off a piece of meat and eaten it whole. Some theropod dinosaurs get to meat in the same way, with teeth that were like razors, scissors, and molars. Also, it's likely that Inostran Sevilla fought with others of its kind, using both its legs and teeth to fight for dominance, food, or mates. Its deadly saber teeth and large size would have made it hard to beat. There is no question that Inostran Sevilla was the top predator of its time and the biggest carnivore in the area. It lived in the Permian period, which lasted from about 259 to 252.3 million years ago. It only lived in what is now Russia, and for most of its time in power, it was in the European part of the country. Deserts made up this area, which was very dry and very hot during the day and very cold at night. But the rivers and streams that ran through the land helped a lot. There also seemed to be a lot of shallow lakes, which would flood and dry up with the seasons, causing chaos and a lot of competition among Anastrensivia. During this time, there were also plants and trees. Most of them were seed ferns, followed by conifers and ginkgos. Since it lived in a harsh place where it could get very cold at night, some people thought it might have had a layer of fur, but we don't know for sure if it did have fur, was hairless, or had scales for protection. Still, if it had fur, it would look a lot like a kind of pre-saber-toothed cat. But it wasn't a kind of cat. Instead, it was a stem mammal, which used to be called mammal-like reptiles, a term that is no longer used, but whatever it was, it would have been a terrifying place for all the other animals that lived there, like the carnivorous Pravoslavi and the other Gorgonopsids, Scutosaurus and Vivaxosaurus. These two predators wouldn't have been a problem for Anastran Sevilla because they were much smaller and wouldn't dare challenge the king of Pamean Russia. Even the biggest and deadliest Gorgon couldn't beat Mother Nature, as the Anastran Sevilla went extinct at the end of the Pamean. We don't know if it died during the mass extinction of the Pamean period, also known as the Great Dying, or if it just went extinct before it started. If it did go extinct during this event, it would have happened during an earlier phase when the Siberian traps caused temperature changes, acid rain, and wildfires that killed it. A huge volcanic feature that is thought to have killed off the Great and any other Gorgonops that lived after the Pumian extinction, making them all extinct, and relics of the past. Inostran Sevilla may be long gone, but its legacy lives on. It was one of the most impressive predators of its time, and it played an important role in the evolution of modern mammals. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell icon for more interesting videos. I will see you in the next video. Thank you.